St. Margaret Mary of Alacoque is known throughout the world for her encounter with the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In this podcast, Sister Susan Marie, a Visitation Sister, is interviewed about this devotion on the Saints and Sages program. Saints and Sages is an outreach of spiritualdirection.com. The podcast is used with their permission. Hey, I'm Jordan Burke. And I'm Kristen Priola. And this is Saints and Sages. Where we talk about the wisdom of the saints and how it's relevant for you. And we have a particularly special guest with us today. We are very honored uh, and very thankful. Uh, We have had numerous uh, technological issues and she has graciously sat with us through all of them. Um, So thank you for that. And would you, Kristen, like to introduce her to everybody? Yes, we have the beautiful guest, Sister Susan. She is currently the superior of the Visitation Monastery in Brooklyn, New York, and she served four terms in this service of the sisters. Um, Sister Susan currently also is Federation President of the Second Federation of the Visitation in the United States and served two terms in this position. She was born in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, attended Catholic elementary and high schools, graduated with a Bachelor of of Arts in English from Hunter College in Manhattan and worked in the communications industry in spot radio sales and television research in rep firms and also television research at NBC. Active in Resurrection Ascension Parish in Queens, New York and entered the Visitation Monastery in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn in 1988. She made her first vows in 1991 and final profession in 1994. Welcome, welcome, Sister Susan Marie. We are so glad that you are here. Thank you. I'm really honored to be here today. It's wonderful to meet you and to be able to share what I can. And we are honored to have you here. And uh, as far as experts go, we're excited because, uh, as you said, you had, you'd actually listen to the first episode, which always makes me cringe a little because I'm, I'm always, I'm always, it was wonderful. Oh, thank you so glory much. Glory to thank God. You. Yeah, glory to God. Wonderful. I enjoyed it. Well, th- glory you to didn't, God. You didn't miss anything that I could tell. Well. You know, so I enjoyed it, and I said, "What am I going to add to that?" But uh, there's there's much we can we can learn and do. Perfect. Well, then let's about. dive in. Then what what could you add to that? <laughs> we would love to hear your story or personal experiences okay. with the beautiful Saint Margaret Mary of Alacoque. Sure, I've been blessed actually to be at her monastery in Pere Le Monial several times, and that was quite an eye opener because you know you can read her work. She has an autobiography uh, that she wrote, as well as um, there's been books written about her, but to actually see her handwritten pages laid out on a table with some of the other items that she used was really, was really awesome. Uh, So that's not my only connection with her, but that was something that was very special. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we just came uh, from completing a a Jubilee year, uh, celebrating St. Margaret Mary's 100th anniversary of canonization. Mm -hmm. And that Jubilee year, was given to us by uh, the Holy Father uh, on the request, I believe, of our own order, who recognized that this would be a special year. And what was um, very special for people was that when we were able to invite them to our uh, monasteries and chapels before the the coronavirus uh, came our way, we did have either masses or hours of adoration or any other event that may have happened in a variety of monasteries around the world. And with that, the people would receive a wonderful grace and blessing and an indulgence as well. So we had a lot of uh, different uh, ways of celebrating. We had some videos produced that would give a little bit more insight on Margaret Mary's life and about the Jubilee year and um, the history of of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and how that whole um, devotion developed. So there's been a lot of excitement this past year in particular. when um, I was in Pere Le Monial years ago, and not too long ago, in, in fact, we were given a, a tour of the monastery, and they will point out the areas that St. Margaret Mary uh, encountered either the Lord, like there's a beautiful uh, garden where she had her, one of her experiences. There was a corner of the building where the angels appeared to her, and you can see that. And um, there was an incident with the well, and they still have the well where she had been, I guess, pumping water and it backfired, you know, the handle 
and knocked out a tooth Ooh. or two. So all of these areas are areas that um, in the monastery that they will bring you around to if you happen to be there. But I wanted to share a little bit about um, a pastoral letter that came out from the bishop of, of that diocese, Oton Diocese, which is where St. Margaret Mary's monastery of Pereira Monial is located. And he, he, he started off by saying, well, why do we like pay attention to the saints? What can they do for us? What is it that's so important? And he said, you know, look at them as big brothers and mm. sisters. They've walked the path. They've gone through what you've gone through. They've been raised to sanctity and they want to help you get there. You to kind of lean on them, f uh, follow their example as much as possible and, and depend on their intercession. And then he talked about St. Margaret Mary as being actually the patroness of adolescence hmm. because she had a very difficult teenage years. In fact, her childhood wasn't so easy you know, after her father died. I think you brought that out last week. Hmm. She had um, uh, fa family members that were kind of controlling her mom and, and herself after her dad died, almost like tyrants in the house. She did have that illness that you mentioned. Her mother got sick and, it, and as a teenager, she had to care for her mother as, as if she were a nurse. She had this vocation brewing within her being and couldn't uh, develop it in any way. She wasn't even always allowed to, to go to the church, the mass, I guess Sunday mass she went, but the, you know, she'd like to go to daily mass and she couldn't. So she would pray behind a rock and face the um, tabernacle where she knew it was situated in the church. She had a lot of struggles in her, mm. in her uh, early teenage years. And of course her prayer life was pretty well developing uh, on her own. She didn't enter the monastery of Pere till she was 24, wow. which mm. you know, was a long, a long time really. And mm. when she got there, she was saying, well, how do you pray really? You know, even though she'd been praying and her formator said, well, you know, just go before the Lord and the blessed sacrament and be as a blank canvas that he will paint <laughs> as if your soul is that blank canvas that he will paint mm -hmm. his beauty upon. And, and it was a mm -hmm. beautiful statement. And that's how she would pray. She would just go before the blessed sacrament and be still for hours before him. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, you know, we can take from sometimes we can't stay still for five minutes in our world and in our <laughs> lives. But if we just think about someone praying for hours, kneeling, uh, trying to let the Lord work within their being, uh, it's a it's a beautiful model and we can take attempts to that here and you know, a little bit at a time. So she was someone that um, really one, any, anybody can follow, maybe not her experiences of those great visions, but her message is what's important. The message of the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Mm. Looking at him, she says, in the Blessed Sacrament, in adoration, you might be feeling your own limitations. You might have something that you're not mm. comfortable about within yourself. Just take yourself before him and look at yourself with his eyes. Look, look at him through the, look at yourself through the Sacred Heart, through his eyes. How do you see yourself now only with love? And that helps mm. our self-esteem, you know, for people who might not have a great um, sense of, of their own self. You know, there are many ways to develop that ability to uh, love the Lord and let the Lord love us. And you mentioned, you mentioned so many, you mentioned the, the, the promises, this, the First Friday devotions and the Holy Hour. There's another, there's so many ways. One of them that I don't think you mentioned, but I'll bring up now is hmm. uh, the guard of honor of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. They also call it the Hour of Presence. You may have come across that uh, when you were uh, doing research. That is a very simple devotion that anybody can participate in and with, while you're doing something else. So right now, for example, if you took the hour from, what is your time now, 12, 11.30 in the morning? Let's say mm -hmm. you took 11 to 12 and you're doing your show. You're offering this time, placing yourself before Jesus on the cross at Calvary before his pierced and wounded heart and offering all you're doing at this time in reparation to mm. that heart. And you do it every day. You don't have to stop and actually say a prayer, but you're making that intention. And that mm. was um, a, a devotion or a practice, I'd say, that was developed by a visitation sister in the mid 1800s after another sister in our founding house of Annecy, France, understood from the Lord 
however she understood it, that the sisters weren't zealous enough in promoting the devotion to the Sacred Heart. So a letter went around to all the monasteries saying, what can we do? And this one sister was praying and she got this inspiration to make a, a, an honor guard. Every hour of the 24 hours, someone would be praying this way, even sleeping, <laughs> you know, just offering that time to the Lord. So that's, you know, that's one way that people can uh, participate. Um, I was thinking about the pilgrimages of St. Margaret Mary's relics. I don't know if you've ever been to a, a, a relic, uh, you know, a, a pilgrimage yes. of relics, mm -hmm. but what we've done in the past, you probably, uh, St. Therese had her relics going around. So what we did um, several years ago, and it, ha it happens all over the world, is uh, the, the, the relics that are at Paré la Monial, which include her brain Whoa. actually, <laughs> which is amazing because, you know, because she had those visions, what the priest said to us was she had the visions and people at, at one point questioned that and she had to be tested. Mm. And in fact, one priest said, oh, just give her more soup and she'll be okay. Mm. Um, but but St. Claude de, de la Colombière was her spiritual ah, director. Yes. He wasn't a saint, of course, at that time. And he, he believed in her and he promulgated what she was saying. So the, the priest who was passing the, the relic, you know, taking the relics around in the pilgrim said, God has a reason for preserving her brain. He wanted to show that this was indeed uh, from, from the Lord and it wasn't something that she was making up. So when the relics came around, everybody who came to the chapel, of course, has the opportunity to reverence them, ask for her intercession, St. Margaret Mary's intercession. And it's, it's like a visit from St. Margaret Mary in a way. And of course, right now we can't really travel, but going to Pere la Monial and visiting um, the monastery mm. there or the entire city, which is basically dedicated in, in its own way to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. They have a diorama of, of her life, of St. Claude's life. His relics are there in a church down the street. Hers are there in the monastery, the visitation chapel where anybody could come in and, and visit. And then um, there's a way that... Um, personally dedicating yourself, consecrating yourself to the Sacred mm. Heart. You can do that every first Friday, or you can do it every day with the prayer that St. Margaret Mary composed herself, or your parish can dedicate or consecrate itself to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, or your diocese. Our Brooklyn Diocese just rededicated mm. itself to the Sacred Heart this past Feast of the Sacred Heart, June 19th. And many visitation monasteries around the world will have, before the Feast of the Sacred Heart, nine days of novena of masses so that every night people will come bring their intentions the priest whoever he may be you may have nine different priests as we do or one priest who carries the theme all the way through there will be a beautiful homily on, on the sacred heart and people will prepare themselves for the feast you know this year we couldn't have it because of the the virus but we were blessed and so was our toledo visitation monastery in, in ohio blessed to have it either live streamed or the mass recorded so that virtually people could still engage in, in, in that novena of masses. And in fact, we're thinking maybe we should do that all the mm -hmm. time so that we'd have more people able to participate in that novena. So there are so many other ways uh, that one could uh, grow in this devotion. Reading the works, one way of, there's many ways you can, certainly online, there are ways to look up. What's that website, sister? The devotion. It's, What's the website could, people uh, could go, go to? Say that again? Yes. What's the website people could go to to find all of this wonderful oh, information? Okay. Visitation Spirit, www.visitationspirit.org will mm. have blogs, posts, and, and, and so forth on all of this material. You might have to search for it. Go to the search and just look for whatever you're looking for. <laughs> um, we'll have, we have videos on St. Margaret Mary. We have a beautiful video from the Visitation Museum in Moulin, mm. France, which has all of the art objects and embroideries and vestments that wow. sisters who have worked in the Visitation Monastery, I mean, lived in the Visitation Monastery, worked as their own form of not only devotion, but the necessary items for the way of life, say a beautiful Sacred Heart vestment for the priest. They did it themselves. And all of this is displayed at this Visitation Museum in Moulin, France. So again, if you happen to be someday in France, mm -hmm. uh, look that up. It's, it's not too far from Paris. Um, so there's, you know, a way of enhancing through art, 
But visitationspirit.org will also have um, a video on the life of St. Saint, uh, Saint, um, Margaret Mary, as well as St. Francis de Sales, St. Mm. James de Chantal, the founders of our visitation order, and many, many other blog posts on St. Margaret Mary or the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, there's a new book coming out as well uh, from an oblate of St. Francis de Sales, and he was inspired by this Jubilee year. He is a writer. He's written other things on Salesian spirituality. Salesian spirituality, you know, follows St. Francis de Sales. But he was inspired by this year to look at the Sacred Heart through the through Salesian eyes. And so he, the book will not be out till November, this coming November. I think it's called Behold This Heart, mm. Francis de Sales and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So again, there's a novena in there or maybe the other, I don't know, I haven't read it <laughs> certainly yet. It's not, but um, there's many ways of, of encouraging oneself to, to um, grow in the devotion. Absolutely. And so sister, I have a question for you. You were chatting about yes. sweet, saint margaret mary alacoque when she was younger and she would mm -hmm. sit before the blessed sacrament for hours and you said sit it to to reflect on almost like an identity thing like reflect on mm -hmm. our our lord painting our white canvas and i i was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit more because that really struck me <laughs> okay well see basically that that information that uh, suggestion was made to her as when she first entered the monastery, she had a prayer life as a child and she must have had a great attraction to the Blessed Sacrament because when she would pray, she would always turn herself towards wherever the church was in town, you know, so she was trying to face the, the Blessed Sacrament in the church. So she had that intrinsically within her as a gift from the Lord from a very young age. But when she went to the monastery, she was, I guess, like anybody, a little insecure. She was in a new environment and she was, you know, interviewing or she was being interviewed by the formator how you're doing and, and things like that and she was questioning well how do i really pray because in the visitation there were formal ways given especially in those days of praying and not everyone always can follow it so their, their mm. heart moves in another direction and maybe that's what she was discussing that i'm guessing mm. at but the formator gave her the the uh, suggestion that the best way to pray, and St. Jane de Chantal, our founder, said the same thing. Ultimately, all visitandines will be drawn to a simple gaze mm. on the Lord. And what this formator said to St. Margaret Mary is, place yourself before the Lord as yourself being a blank canvas that a painter will paint his own design upon. So the Lord is the one who made us, first of all. He gave us our character, our personality, um, all of those things that we are. But we're always all trying to grow, but we don't know always the best way to encourage ourselves to grow. He <laughs> does. So by spending time before him live, so to speak, in the Blessed Sacrament, he, in, his, in silence, will continue to develop your inner being, your soul, your spirit. All you have to really do is be silent and let him do it. You know, there's all kinds of prayer. There's, you know, local prayer and a prayer of intercession and all kinds. But this kind of prayer is being simply open to him, loving him, heart to heart, just sitting there and letting his presence fill you, become aware of his presence and let him do what he will. We don't always know what he's doing, but he will show you later by the effects in your life. First of all, you may can't come away from that peaceful, mm -hmm. more peaceful than you went in. You know already there's been an effect. You may find yourself being more um, open to another person. You may find yourself being able to love better. It's his mystery. He's the artist. <laughs> so that's, that's what her advice, and she followed that. Of course, she had ecstasies, and she, of course, was then given the visions of the Lord, but not, that won't happen for everyone. But you will have something happen. And that was later? If you don't yourself sense it. Oh, sorry, I interrupted. Is that, was that later? Much later? When what? How old no, was no, she no. when she experienced it those visions? Like, it wasn't much later. I, I, I was going to guess about 26, maybe. If she went, if it's, if she went in, um, at 16, she went into entered the monastery 1671. I think the visions, the primary visions, uh, was 1673 to 1675. So she was in her 20s. She was in her 20s. Wow. And a lot of our listeners are in their 20s. And sometimes it's really hard mm -hmm. to just sit there and stop and, and let mm -hmm. the Lord speak to us because. Our world is really full of information, 
of, you know, mm-hmm. let's just just noise. all noise it's yeah. chaotic like yeah. this world is so chaotic and it's con- the enemy is constantly trying to distract me from my main mission and my main purpose that the lord has given me um to love him and to love others you know and so i really am i'm excited to sit before our lord in this new way and just seeing myself as a blank canvas i hadn't thought of it like that before and sister i'm really encouraged by um you sharing that so yeah, I was really struck by that as well, and I'm, it's something that I would I'd love to take to uh, adoration myself. I've I've been taking notes as you've been speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of notes written down. Um, I, I was curious, could you speak to her involvement with um, the the Sacred Heart of Jesus kind of becoming what it is now? The development of the of the devotion. Yes, ma'am. Mm. You mean? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So. She was given the, the, the mission, really, of making the Sacred Heart of Jesus known beyond individual, private, um, either revelations or inspirations. Many, and, and you mentioned this also last time, many people preceded St. Margaret Mary with a, some kind of an attraction toward the Sacred Heart of Jesus, but they weren't given the mission of making it public. Mm-hmm. She was. Now, of course, she was a cloistered nun. So how do you do that? How do you do well, that? Well, first of all, she started, <laughs> I mean, really. So she started where she was now at that time, or not at that very time, but as time went on, she was made the formator of novices, new members of the community. So she started spreading the devotion through them. And there was a first little picture that was drawn of the Sacred Heart, a hand drawn. It's still, it's still in the monastery of Pere la Monial. And she encouraged the um, sort of a devotion with, with that picture as, as the visual for the devotion. She got into a lot of trouble for that because the other sisters felt she was doing uh, things that St. Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantal hadn't, hadn't started themselves. So how can you start something new? But oh. it wasn't herself, it was the Lord encouraging her. Wow. So they would, oh, they would throw holy water on her when she was walking in the car, but thinking that maybe it was the <sighs> evil one that was having her um, move in this direction. You know, she would have an ecstasy and get kind of, you know, uh, I don't say unconscious, because I don't know what you call it in mm. an ecstasy, I'm sorry to say, but she wasn't vibrant at that moment so all kinds of things would happen to her and they kind of were suspicious until they finally came to believe but she started that way with her own little group you always start with where you are then she needed direction in her life she had so much going on so that god sent her his perfect friend saint claude de la colombiere he believed her he became very enamored of the sacred heart and went on in his own life to spread this word in other countries because he was then sent to England to work with the court, the Catholic, there was one Catholic on the British court at that time and he went to work there and he started the, the, spreading the devotion there from what he had learned from St. Margaret Mary. They both dedicated themselves together to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and, and then they had to go their separate ways. So she, she then wrote many, many letters not only to, uh, um, uh, within her own community, I know, I can't explain why they wrote, she wrote letters to her own superior, but in any case, there were letters written when that superior left to another monastery, and other sisters and other monasteries spreading this love of the Sacred Heart, and then they took it up. So before it ever became in the church officially, the visitation monasteries were now uh, honoring the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and some of them started to get insights, and that's how it developed. The Lord did not stop with St. Margaret Mary. Mm. He then tapped other sisters of the visitation in other ways to continue the devotion. For example, uh, when Sister St. Margaret Mary died in 18, uh, 18, 1690. In 1696, another sister was born who became a visitanding sister. Her name was Sister Anne Madeleine Remusat. She entered the visitation in Marseille, France. Now, if you know anything about Marseille, back in the 1700s, they had a terrible, terrible bubonic plague. Bubonic oh, plague. wow. And she, she, yeah, which is very, you know, reminiscent of what's happening to us now in a way. It is. Mm-hmm. And she, I was thinking. And she prayed and she begged the Lord and offered sacrifices and and worked with the bishop of that diocese, uh, Bishop Belsons, who then dedicated the city of Marseille, the very first city in the world to be dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Oh, wow. And, and that, the, the plague abated uh, from that uh, consecration and so the, the, the lord 
is obviously communicating with her to uh, expand the devotion in this manner of dedication of cities. Then um, over time, there was another sister. Her name is Sister Mary Martha Shambone. She lived close to our days. She died in 1907. She received from the Lord the inspiration to look at his heart through his wounds and to be, to mm. pray to his holy wounds, pray. We're all wounded. Our hearts are wounded. So if you have a mm. wounded heart, you can pray the grace from his loving heart through his wounds because your heart is wounded for some reason. So she was encouraged to do that. And there's a chaplet of the holy wounds that she was given to pray. And that has gone around the world. And people can use that as a vocal prayer when they, when they need it. There was a sister who was uh, given the uh, inspiration from the Lord to encourage priests to be more cognizant of the love of his heart for priests. His heart is burning with love for priests. Mm. And so she was encouraged to pray for priests through the sacred heart. It developed over time. Um, another sister who you, we don't know much about, but uh, I mean, in the world, we don't know much about, we know more about in the visitation. She was a contemporary of St. Faustina Hmm. And she too received the understanding of the heart and merciful love. And she was promoting merciful love at the same time, around hmm. the same time St. Faustina was. Wow. So there, um, wow. That's a cool God connection. God speaks to us and something speaks more loudly or he has a special mission. So he's continually trying to bring us back to his love. Of course, then the divine mercy, you know, we know hmm. that, that story about St. Faustina, mm -hmm. but that's the other side of the coin of the sacred heart. Wow. Right? What about you, Sister Susan? This Marie? is very interesting. Oh, yeah. so yes. sorry, we have a video well, lag. The very first time I became aware of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was in kindergarten. Hmm. And I don't really know what we were doing, but I'll explain. We were in, I was in kindergarten, and one day they took us all up the entire, it seemed to me like the entire school. It might not have been because I was a little bit. <laughs> sure. But they took us up all these flights of stairs in the school, all the way it was to the top floor. It was the fourth floor or something. I was, you know, in kindergarten, we were in bottom floor. And, and we stood around a statue of the Sacred Heart. Now, wherever I was placed, I was placed directly in front of this statue, which seemed humongous mm -hmm. to me. I can still remember looking up all, and, and looking at his, his face and his heart. And it's something that I never forgot. Now, what I think was happening now, in retrospect, mm -hmm. is we were probably being consecrated either the school or the children in the school to the sacred heart of Jesus. Wow. I'm not sure I understood anything about it, but I never, never forgot that, that moment, that impression of his heart and his face and this huge statue. And, but I didn't, I can't say I had a devotion from that point on, like some people mm -hmm. can perhaps. Um, but when I discovered the visitation monastery for other reasons, for reasons of prayer, I wanted to pray very soon afterwards, it doesn't take much because we're surrounded by images of the Sacred Heart mm. here. And I learned about how St. Margaret Mary, who I'd heard of before, but quite frankly, never associated with the visitation order. I hadn't known in my past that she was a visitating sister. So we're surrounded by relics, we're sur her relics, for example. We're surrounded by um, statues and pictures. So you begin to understand that this is something very special. And then over time, I began to go to his heart and in our chapel, which, and by the way, we do take retreats. Um, so <laughs> when the, yes. So it's just all visitation monasteries take mm. retreats anywhere in the country or any, any part of the mm. world, I believe. So women who are interested in um, spending time certainly can come. Right now, of course, with the virus, we have to wait a while, but that will return. And I think in Mobile, our Mobile, Alabama visitation monastery, they have a huge retreat house and they also have programs for men there. Mm. So. If um, anybody wants to be surrounded with that ambiance of, of the um, sacred heart, sacred heart, uh, it's certainly there. So, so by looking, we we have the stained glass window. It faces our choir, and the sun will shine through this window right through his heart. Mm. And you you know the blessed sacrament is a little bit to the right of that. So you you and he, he if we don't have exposition, the tabernacle faces the people, not so much us. But when we have exposition, of course, the monstrance faces us. So what happens often is you're more drawn almost to the stained glass window because it's so predominant. But um, one time I just felt that we're all spouses of Christ and mm. he's just pouring his, his love upon us. 
in this, my, what I've been very privileged to be able to do during the various times that I've had those opportunities is try to develop the devotion for the for the for the public mm. in different ways. So, um, back in like I had mentioned, back in 2010, we did have the pilgrimage of the relics of Saint Margaret Mary, um, and that of course happened through a variety of people to bring them here. There are a very special um, priest and a, a laywoman who worked together as a team from France, Father Edward Moreau and Mrs. Alicia Beauvisage. They work to spread the devotion and they came to the United States and they went to every school and monastery that would accept them of the visitation wow. order at that time <laughs> to speak to the children and sisters. So again, we, we try to bring that deeper devotion to others. Um, our bishop established the Sacred Heart Apostolate in 2012 in our diocese to encourage parishes to become more familiar. We had mm -hmm. um, many things like that uh, in order to encourage people because it grows within you. you know, it grows within you over, over the years. And sister, it's grown within me. And I don't know about Jordan, but my husband and I consecrated our home to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we renewed that consecration just uh, just this month, uh, actually near, oh, that's um, beautiful. near her day. But so I guess my personal connection is that I was born on October 17th. <laughs> so, and I know that's when she passed away. Oh, um, yes. And so I guess that's my personal connection, but it's fascinating that this is the Jubilee year and that we can celebrate mm -hmm. her beautiful mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord and her intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I really desire to share that intimate love that, that she knew so well with others too. And so, Thank you so very much for sharing all of the wonderful just connections and insights and experiences that you've personally had and that you know of because there's so much like that's why I kept saying on the last episode is like there's so much we could say about this beautiful saint who loved our Lord it deeply. Um, and so I guess if we were we're going to wrap up this conversation, but if there were three things that you could okay. say to our listeners about the beautiful St. Margaret Mary of Alacoque and the sacred heart of Jesus and this devotion to his divine love in his sacred heart, what would you say to them? I guess the first thing I'd say is believe in his love. He really, really loves you more than, more than your husband, your wife, anybody. He really mm -hmm. does. And how do you get to know that? By spending time before him in his real presence. St. Margaret Mary spent hours and hours because this was her lover. This was her spouse. Mm. He is also the spouse of everyone's souls, ultimately. So spend time with the Lord. And then if you really are interested in things that will help you grow in the devotion, look those, look into that. Look into the Guard of Honor or look into um, the story of St. Margaret Mary or her letters. Let something feed your own spirit. Maybe it's the, a video, something that will feed you and, and have touch your soul so that it'll encourage you to keep looking and learning. But being with him is the best. I, the enthronement of the Sacred Heart is wonderful in your home. If you can do that, I'd encourage it. That it's the best domestic way you can honor the Lord with a picture and uh, making him the center of your family. I love that. Come for a retreat if you can. <laughs> I actually pulled up the, uh, the visitation monastery in Mobile, and it looks absolutely Exquisite. stunning. As soon as you mentioned it, I, I, I knew that I had to pull it up, and I'm looking forward to giving it a visit. Mm -hmm. Sister, yes. how much does it cost to come and visit you? We don't really have a, a charge. It's, it's a Whoa! <laughs> okay. I mean, you might have... Yeah, I mean, you have to travel and spend of something. Of course. But, you know, wow, I would donate a lot. I'm just really honored and touched by your time that you've given us today. Um, I know that you must, as Mother Superior, be very busy and um, have lots of things to tend to um, in in the in the monastery. And so, thank you for your time and thank you for your uh, your prayers and your devotion because I'm very inspired by your love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And your insight and dedication is is really inspiring. And, and again, I want to echo what Kristen said. I'm very thankful that you spent time with us today and were able to give us more insight into this amazing saint. I, I think I said it in the first episode, I was so struck by her um dedication to the sacred heart and it's it's 
I keep using the word inspiring. I wish I knew another word to use. <laughs> but that's the word that I'm stuck on right now, inspiring. So thank you again. And thank you for this opportunity to share the love of the sacred heart. Absolutely. I know that to be with for you. sure. <laughs> Thank you. And I just know that we'll be praying for you, sister. I'm going to write you down in my little we'll prayer book. I have a little list of um, sisters and that I pray for every day. And so I'll add you to my list and I'm really grateful. And I was wondering if you could close us with a prayer. Certainly. Most sacred heart of Jesus, we place our trust in you. We place our lives in your heart. We place our worries and our concerns in your heart. We ask that your love overflow our hearts so that we can become like you. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Thank you so much. And we're going to send everybody to your website. Um, we'll put the link in. Uh, it's, already in there. it's already in there. Jordan's already got there. it. Got yep. the link. And so hopefully anybody's interested in the vocation and discerning your vocation. Um, and if you want to meet mm -hmm. Sister yeah. Susan Marie, you can visit them at the Visitation Monastery in New York. So, um, yeah, thank you so much thank again. You. God bless you in your ministry. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. you too. Thank you again. Sister Margaret Mary Alacoque. Sister Saint, Saint, Saint Sister Margaret, Margaret Mary Alacoque. Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Amen. Amen. Bye. 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 For more information on devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and visitation spirituality, go to visitationspirit.org.